Today is the first time Donald Trump sat as a defendant for the actual start of any criminal trial. We are past indictments, arraignments, all those pretrial motions, and the many, many failed attempts by Trump and his lawyers to delay this judgment day today in New York. He lost those efforts, and this defense table is not where he wanted to be today. But Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg has now achieved results where other prosecutors were thwarted. Bragg taking a campaign year cover-up and charging it as a felony plot. About 500 New Yorkers showed up today as potential jurors in this case. They may not recall the many details of this story that now dates from seven years ago. Most of the courtroom action will be about selecting 12 jurors and six alternates. This day ended with no jurors selected yet. And this first day of the trial immediately dove into evidence about Donald Trump's potential criminal motive. Lawyers clashing over how to reference that infamous Access Hollywood tape, which prosecutors say motivated then-candidate Trump to pay off Stormy Daniels by Election Day. He wanted it done beforehand for a campaign purpose. That's one sign of the many fireworks to come, which could captivate this jury and the nation watching. So here we are, April 15th, 2024, now sets a legal precedent and marks American history. Other people who have served as president have been investigated, impeached, and accused of all kinds of wrongdoing. But none, none of them ever ended up at that defendant's table for a criminal trial where Donald Trump sat today. This is not a forum where the defendant has control. The judge is in charge and the jury decides. And that was clear immediately today as defendant Trump sat largely subdued and motionless, his public outbursts muted, his political bluster on hiatus. Legally, Donald Trump is presumed innocent. The burden of proof is on prosecutors alone. But starting tonight and in these weeks ahead, Americans will be presented with this momentous trial, the evidence, the testimony, both sides of the case. No one really knows what comes next. We don't know what the legal outcome will be. We don't know how a mistrial, which would not convict the defendant, we don't know how that would land with voters, or if a Trump conviction would bring a jail sentence, or if a conviction would impact voters. Overall, Donald Trump does face four total indictments. We've covered that. And remember, three of them turn on alleged election crimes, crimes about abusing and trying to get or hold on to power. Those three in D.C., Georgia, and New York. Now, this New York case just happens to be the first prosecution to go to trial, and it could very well be the only one to go to trial before this year's elections. So the stakes really could not be higher. Our whole panel is here to get into this tonight. I want to bring in uh, Rachel Maddow, who joins us on remote. First, Rachel, what does today and the start of this trial mean? First of all, I think that was an excellent summary, Ari. I think that you put those stakes exactly right. I mean, it took us a long time to get here. The origin of this case is, you know, ahead of the 2016 election. It's been a long time. That in itself is, bit of, is a bit of a scandal, I think. That's part of what I'm going to be talking about on my show tonight at, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but we did finally get here. You know, the, the wheels of justice grind slowly. I did not think they would grind so slowly that they would rock the defendant apparently to sleep at the defense table today. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I have to say, I, I, do, I was not there. I do not know if he was asleep. It is possible he was, you know, meditating or, or just <laughs> resting his eyes or something. I don't know. But like... That's those headlines, you know, on the front page of The New York Times, front page of The Washington Post, front page of The Huffington Post, front page of multiple news outlets today coming out of this, that Trump appeared to fall asleep on the first day of his trial. Those are going to stick. I mean, I know it's not the most important legal thing, but we are in the middle of a campaign. And the, you know, the age issue is the main thing the Trump campaign wants to use against his opponent, the whole Sleepy Joe thing. I mean, this is is, as you said, Ari, this is the most historic thing that Donald Trump has ever done. No president ever has been, no former president ever has been a criminal defendant. And on day one, the headlines coming out of it are that he appeared to doze off. And to me, that's just, I mean, it's, it's insane. 
It's also a reminder of how 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 scary, however scary and 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 somber and important this is. We're also dealing with somebody who is just fundamentally buffoonish, and this will be as much a reminder of that as it is of all the more serious things here that are at stake. You know, this is a guy, this is, we've already had mentions today of like the one alleged mistress and the other alleged mistress and the doorman who's making the allegations about the alleged love child with the third alleged mistress. And then, I mean, and the, the crux of this is not who he slept with. The crux of this is his alleged criminal conspiracy with the National Enquirer. I mean, this really is a fundamentally mm. buffoonish person. Um, and this will center that in the mind of the American people in a way that, you know, him staying awake in court today might have might have diverted. But this is what we've got. You go to you go to the election with the candidate you have. Yeah. And, and Rachel, this goes, as you say, back to 16. So I have one more question about that. And then I think Chris looked like he wanted to react to your point about the courtroom decorum. Uh, but but Rachel, on 2016, you've advised everyone from all the way back then Watch what they do, not what they say. Even when what they say is so outrageous, it sometimes merits a certain amount of understandable reaction. Um, what he says is, I'll testify. What he says is, bring it on. But what he does is try every which way, including in a final losing motion this morning, to prevent the very judgment day in this process um, that we're now going to cover. Yes, that's exactly right. The motions to delay this, to recuse the judge, to move the venue, to move it to federal court, to get the, 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 the charges thrown out. I mean, these are all things that a defendant is, is eligible to try, right? You, the defendants have a lot of rights and they can exercise all of them without prejudice against their case. But he's desperate to make this go away. And going all the way back to the original investigation here, when he had control of the U.S. Justice Department, in particular when he had his guy Bill Barr in the U.S. Justice Department, Bill Barr took remarkable, I think, national scandal level yep. steps to try to make this investigation and this case go away on Trump's behalf. There's a reason this case has bothered him from the beginning. And, you know, again, watch, watch how they behave when confronted with it, not what they say when they try to dismiss its importance. Well, just to Rachel's point about the, the campaign dynamics, the optics of all this and the and the um, <clears throat> sustained eye resting that apparently happened in the courtroom. I mean, I do feel like if you if you call your opponent Sleepy Joe, you have one job Stay for the safe. rest of the campaign, yeah. which is like you got to like <laughs> clockwork orange those puppies, <laughs> like open at all times. But it's also interesting, too, to imagine. I mean, again, this man who I think is not a particularly emotionally regulated individual and does not have a tremendous degree of self-mastery and discipline in a situation in which, to your point, Ari, he doesn't control things, in which he doesn't control the pace, the conversations are happening outside of his purview, but he has to sit there and watch it. I mean, it is... I, I really can't think of a thing that's more nightmarish in some ways for him just at a personal level of, like, you don't, you don't have, like, the stimulus. You don't, you're not getting, like, little ego bumps from some social media replies. And you just got to sit there and watch this day after day. I mean, this was day one. This is weeks and weeks of this. So just at the most sort of human level, I was just watching the reports today and thinking about just the sheer psychological torture. I really mean that. That is this. And then also the point that he keeps making, which is which is true, although not for the reasons he says, which is he's not on the campaign trail talking to people. Like, he's not doing events with, like, you know, the, the, the farmers in Michigan or some whatever swing state rally he would be doing. He's sitting in a courtroom in New York where he's accused of serious crimes and felonies where a serious case is going to be presented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was struck by the visual of him in the courtroom. Obviously, cameras are not in the courtroom. We didn't see, but we did see the photo of him in the courtroom. He looks small in rough. that photo, rough, a little <laughs> rough in that photo, I think it's fair to say. But he also was treated as every defendant would have been treated, as, as that's how our justice system should work. He walked down those same dark, dingy hallways, right, that others did. He had to face the judge and answer some simple questions. That's not him, to Chris's point, controlling his own narrative and kind of spouting out to the public. And that struck me. I was a little surprised by that. Um, the other thing I thought was striking is this, this whole case has been shorthanded, right, as this hush money case. We're all talking about so many legal cases at all the time. The hush money case, the hush money case. And today, it really brought to the surface not just the details about this particular case, but 
Karen McDougal, in that case, the paying off, as Rachel mentioned, the National Enquirer paying off people to prevent stories from being from emerging. That tells you that that's a character case there. So if you're looking at the, the fact that the backdrop of this is a political campaign, we don't know what the politics will be. But I wouldn't say this was like a particularly good visual optics day for Donald Trump. I mean, I, I'm can we just go back to the sleeping? A Republican said to me at 2.30 after Maggie Haberman appeared on CNN, who was actually, they, Maggie's in the courtroom. A lot of our yep. reporters and, and Sue Craig was on my show is in the overflow room. But Maggie Haberman is in the in the courtroom, reported that he slumped and fell asleep for a moment. Now, I have a newborn. I fall asleep everywhere except on live TV. I've got like a mountain of sympathy for nodding off. It's actually deeply relatable. Deeply. <laughs> deeply relatable. However, Let's be clear. The, the, the entire <laughs> crux of the campaign against Joe Biden, mm -hmm. not just on TV and stump speeches, but all the smears, all the attacks, all the maligning of Joe Biden is about his feebleness. And Donald Trump fell asleep on the first day of his criminal trial today. And if, if the parties were flipped, that would be everywhere. Oh, my God. You, you know, I mean, so, I, so it just, it. for me, the asymmetry of the moment yeah. was in such stark contrast when only Republicans were calling me and saying, what are you going to do about Trump falling asleep? I was like, wait, what? I can't, I can't run it down. Like, what do you need, 11 sources? He fell asleep. Maggie's on you know, CNN saying it. The other thing about today is that Trump is running on the crimes he was charged with mm -hmm. in the two jacks he's running on the insurrection he starts his rallies with mm -hmm. you know ode to the insurrectionists and me together forever you, you know me and them he is running on stealing classified documents saying when you're president you can do it because of the presidential records act he's not running on having mm -hmm. sex with stormy daniels and karen mcdougall mm -hmm. and paying the national Enquirer to mm -hmm. catch and kill those stories not running on these facts because he doesn't want these facts in front of the country mm -hmm. rachel you were nodding go ahead i was just going to say the on the national Enquirer part of it i mean Things that we learned about the, I mean, the fact that the National Enquirer has to be central to a presidential, you know, to somebody who was a president and who wants to be president again itself is insane. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.